All right, welcome everybody to the metrics model meeting. Uh, it's February 1st in some parts of the world. I think it's February 2nd in other parts of the world. So uh, welcome. Uh, so our first item uh, today is that Cincinnati Bengals have a football team and they're in the Super Bowl, which is the championship. And Elizabeth is from Cincinnati and she's a big Bengals fan. And so we're all rooting for the Bengals because of that. I'm, I'm with <laughs> <But> you. <laughs> I appreciate add, you all Elizabeth? very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> sure. It'll be on the DEI call meeting tomorrow too, I guarantee. <laughs> all right. Um, oh, wait. I, I put it in the wrong week. I'll put it back up here. Go Bengals. Um, so a couple things I wanted to talk about. I'll share my screen here. Um, I just wanted to be clear from folks. We had kind of talked about this. And I don't know if it made it into the metrics model call two weeks ago, but as the metrics model team has, and they're building models and they have metrics that they would like to develop that aren't necessarily part of a model and haven't been developed, or they are part of a model and they haven't been developed by a working group. It's the metrics model working group's responsibility to open an issue in that respective working group and say, you know, mm -hmm. here's a preliminary metric that we're thinking about. It would be helpful in that issue if you could give some guidance, like what the question is, maybe what the, the overview is and the objectives, you know, the description and the objectives of what you kind of hope this, this might be. Um, but it's not on the, the, the other working groups like evolution, risk, DEI to, to really track what's going on in this group. They can, you see what I'm saying? It's not a pull from those groups. It's really a push. I might um, add, uh, yeah. it's, it's probably, uh, it's probably a good idea if, uh, the person who is, uh, uh, trying to get this metric defined maybe if they hang out in with the working group and maybe help define yeah. it as well <laughs> <laughs> so or some some liaison to go to that to yeah. go to that group and talk rather than yeah, rather than just uh, uh hmm. putting it on the front porch and lighting it on fire hmm. and ringing the doorbell right yeah good idea to attend a meeting or two as well Oops. Okay, cool. It seems to make sense and no, no big deal there. So um, last week there was, um, there was a lot of talk around that large document, the sustainability model document. I broke that out into the five different metrics or metrics models that I thought were in there safety, burnout risk, funding, security risks, and minimum vitality. And I'll talk a little bit about each one of those. I also um, updated, am I looking at the right one here? Yeah, I also updated the um, thing, the spreadsheet to correspond to the respective single documents that is each one of these this is the original document just because I, I did mess around a little bit with some of the text to get it to fit with the metrics model template a little bit better and so if you feel like i lost something in in getting it from this big document into the respective smaller documents here's the big document as well and we can always go back to that and the other thing is this this larger document this has uh, all the comments in it as well. And when I made the smaller documents, like none of those comments are there. Make sense? See it? So I just, I pulled everything over. Um, does anybody have questions just kind of on what I'm doing here at first? Should make a fair amount of sense. Um, so with respect to safety, it was a little muddy in this document because it felt like a lot of this text was about sustainability at the top, 
and not necessarily about safety, but there were some comments in here that were about safety. So I tried to kind of work through some of this text, which is no longer in any metric model because we don't really have a metric model called sustainability. The focus area is called sustainability. Um, and so I used some of this text and tried to work through a little bit down here to start building out the why you should care component. Um, I also went through to the best of my ability what I think were the metrics that were kind of brought up and could be useful in this um, particular metrics model. Implementation, I don't have one. References, I, I thought a lot of these comments were like kind of they were like thoughts that were coming from the group because I was again I wasn't here two weeks ago, so I was doing my best to guess what was going on. And so I used these as references, we can clean this up a little bit and then contributors I didn't put anything yet. Alright, so we can take a closer look at the safety metric model here in just a second any questions on, on kind of what i'm doing. All right, the next one was burnout risk. I did the same thing. So I just kind of followed the text that I had, tried to, we're gonna to have to talk a little bit about the different contributor metrics, because there was one comment like we need contributor metrics and we have a whole bunch and it could be all, it could be some subset, but I did my best to um, figure out why you should care. I'll put that in text form. Um, any of these down here, I'm sorry. Anytime you see a metric that doesn't have like a corresponding link to a chaos metric, that means I don't think we have that metric or it's, I'm not quite sure what it is. And so these would be potential candidates for metrics to develop, or we just don't worry about them in this particular metrics model. We can always improve the metrics models later, but I'm, Sometimes I just don't think we have everything that was asked for implementation references and, and contributions. The other thing I did here was this metric. It feel I think this metric model is called burnout risk and we have a metric called project burnout. And I think the suggestion mm -hmm. is to rename the project burnout metric to maintainer wellness. Is that correct? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that was Emma's idea to um, since the, it seemed like a lot of the metric was was centered around wellness, include, including burnout. But um, yeah, so she opened an issue. I think she opened that. I, I opened that. I just put it in there. OK, um, maybe she did, too. And I totally I, we have duplicate issue in there now. So she was she may have not done it yet. I don't know. But um, it, a lot of the stuff in that metrics model was kind of M and I got to get together in a separate call and just did kind of a brain dump. So it's kind of disorganized, but <laughs> in the, in the just... burnout risk metric model. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why oh. it was a little messy just because we were putting our thoughts in there and it wasn't, okay. oh, here's Emma right here. So, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Hi, Emma. That's okay. Hello. Um, Emma, one minute recap. I'm, I spent time uh, today going through this large document mm -hmm. that contains probably five different metrics models. Mm -hmm. And I created a, a shared doc for each one of them so that we could kind of focus on each one individually. So there is now a single doc that is for safety a single doc that is for burnout risk, a single doc that is for funding, for security risk, and for minimum vitality. So I just took that big document and I split it into five is what I did, just awesome. so we can track Thank each you. one individually. Sure. Um, and then Emma, you had, I was also just saying, I was on burnout risk. I was also just saying that I had put an issue and maybe you did, so I'm sorry if I did a duplicate issue in the DEI working group it was to rename Project Burnout to Maintainer Wellness. That was a suggestion that you had, and we'll bring that up in the DEI working group. All right, um, funding, we're not risk, safety. Um, 
funding same same scenario <laughs> you get you get the routine at this point i kind of tried to go through here capture what i could uh, and then put it into its own its own document um, security risk i didn't do this one because i think this is a document from emma or somebody uh, it's my own project it's, it's yours okay so somebody else owned this and I didn't want I didn't want to just remake it for, for remaking sake. So this one was already kind of its own its own thing. So I didn't really spend a lot of time on this one just because it kind of looked like it was it was there. Um and then lastly, minimum vitality. There wasn't much there, but I still made the document anyway, just so we have it for the future. So any questions on that? All right. Um, do do we want to work on one of these for for a second, or does anybody uh, have a comment? I, actually, how, yeah, I, I did want to add one comment to that, and that is that um, in the in the previous meeting, the one that that you weren't in, um, different people um, took responsibility for different of these sections. Okay, and um, and so we probably want to talk about that and you know empower each of them to take ownership do you is it in the minutes or is it in that do you know if it's in the minutes or if it's in this big doc because we could tag doc. each person if you scroll down tag. it's in that doc it's in this one oh here we go yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah i didn't see that part all right um so okay so lucas you've got that one so can somebody tag Yahui and Emma with funding and burnout tag? Like we could just go right into this doc, I think, would be the most sensible thing to do at this point. Can we can we add that to the meeting notes? Yeah. Do you, do you want me to type it? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see where that was in the meeting notes. This is this is actually in the big. So this so there was this one big document that contained basically five metrics models. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can we pull it out of there and put it in the meeting notes? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Can Can you do that? <laughs> While uh, I'm talking. Yeah. Where's this Where's this document at the? If you go to the spreadsheet. It's the original doc with comments. You see that there? Uh, original doc with comments. Yep, I got it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Should we just take a second and tag people? It take like two seconds. All right, safety. Who is on safety? Somebody read it to me. I think anyone's listed. <laughs> fine. <laughs> you, Matt, you get to pick. Well, all right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was wondering though, like, um, I mean, I want to work on safety, and I'm working on burnout, like, but I'd love to invest in one at a time, kind of thing. I yeah. don't know how you've thought about the succession sorry my brain is not good to this <laughs> i like the progression movie. is the word not succession um <laughs> because i also want to be able to like have like an mvp of one of these to talk about at some point like so that so sure anyway so you put my name on safety but i won't be doing i don't think i can handle it at the same time as some others yeah no that's no problem you can put it, me on safety too okay you, yeah um Okay, my brain is a little slow too. <laughs> <laughs> We're a good team. Uh, okay. Are we, is safety going to be, are we going to work on it in this doc or is it going to be worked on in a different doc? It'll be worked on in, in not the giant one, but the individual one that I made. Does that make sense? Yes. And that's the, that's the document that you're in right now. Yep, the one I'm showing. Okay. I just wanted to get all of these out. Okay. I just want to make sure we're not we're not coordinating in that long doc. No, and the only reason I kept the long doc is because it has some comments in here. So like if somebody's 
like working on safety here, there might just be some residual comments that you want to capture. So, and I, I didn't see safety as one of the listed in the in right original here. doc. It's right there. In the original document? Mm -hmm. At the bottom where we're at people. Oh, assigned. nope. As far as anybody claiming it, no. Okay. You are but correct. Some, but someone has claimed it now. We just correct. claimed it, yeah. Well, me they okay. claim. and Elizabeth. And then somebody read, how about burnout? Burnout was Emma and myself. Mm -hmm. okay. um, let me say that I really like the um, idea of focusing this on uh, wellness over, over burnout. Do you like the idea of this being wellness or the yeah. metric being wellness? the model being okay. uh, wellness, which so is at the moment we have two burnouts. We have project burnout, which is a metric by itself. And we have burnout risk, which is a metric model. Mm. And your your comment was you kind of like the idea of this. Pardon me for being so, so unclear. Um, yeah. I was thinking about the burnout risk uh, model and um and i like the idea of wellness being um okay. the focus as opposed to burnout okay because um we've seen that uh well wellness has been a factor in security and clearly isn't quite the same thing as burnout okay other comments or thoughts totally open we're, we're in the early stages of these things so this is now that was a good time to have these conversations. I I'm wonder. Trying to look at what what did we call? How do we define burnout? I know that Elizabeth and I tried to like define everything as we went along, so that we. So at the very top, did we like talk like describe what burnout was? And the reason I ask is because the mental wellness or whatever we want to call it was a component of the metrics model, but it also included things like people have, there's too many issues and pull requests to ever manage based on like a calculation of the number of maintainers. So um, I don't know if, if it's like, I don't want to like turn too much on words, but is burnout the wrong bucket for that? And then what it, if, if so, then what is that called? Which is basically like the exhaustion of things, right? The exhaustion of a person, the exhaustion of the ability to respond. Um, the, um, yeah, so what is the right word then? I like, I like exhaustion because it gets, it yeah. explains, it just explains what you're talking about. Yeah, it's, it's really mathematical in a lot of ways. Like when I was going through it was Elizabeth, we're like, we just need a good math, you know, quotient for some of these. So this is a metric that we have called project burnout, which is a released metric. Atomic metric, is that correct. what we call those? You are, okay. you are correct. Okay. Yes. <laughs> As you can see, I like to like stay with my words so I don't say the wrong thing. <laughs> you are 100% correct. However, just because we claim it as an atomic metric, that doesn't necessarily mean we can't uh, uh, reevaluate it. So mm -hmm. we've had we've had some in the past that uh, we've claimed as atomic metrics that when we've looked at them closely, it's it's really a collection of two or three other metrics. So. Um, and, I, and I wonder whether um, minimum vitality uh, might fit inside of burnout or wellness in the sense that if the burden on maintainers is higher than they're, you know, I don't know, they're working harder, more likely to burn out. So I wonder if, I feel like we need to step back a little bit and I, I don't know, because Elizabeth and I walked this, I don't know if Elizabeth, would it make sense for us just to talk through our thought process on this and then get into the appropriateness of things? And like, I feel like we're diving a little soon into the details. Yeah, I was actually, I was gonna make a comment a little bit earlier that it that it feels like we're, we're trying to do too much 
right now. And it might be helpful if we just if we just stepped back and maybe grabbed one metric model that it makes sense to work on, or two or three maybe, because there's multiple people here, that it makes sense to work on and just kind of focus on those. Uh, and then some of my some of my comments about that I will hold off on until we get to I noticed that there's some release process stuff in there, so I, I have some thoughts on that as well that are kind of connected to uh, what I just said. So Elizabeth and Emma, do you want to talk through your process by which you were kind of thinking about burnout or? Yeah, I'm deferring to Elizabeth because I've already talked. <laughs> okay, you're allowed to talk again. <laughs> no, I'm just, I get excited and talk too much. So I'm going to make room for other people. Um, okay. Well, yeah, it's fine. You're fine. You're good. Um, so yeah, so we kind of went around and around with this. Um, we we had a process which is in the bottom of that one doc. Yeah, can we go uh, back to the doc? Um, yeah. Yeah, actually, it was in the long one. The big one, okay. At the bottom of the long yeah. one, and it had the steps that we're going to take. So that's that was kind of our thought process in developing. It's all the way down at the bottom. That it started off as a note to self kind of thing. Yeah, might be helpful. Yeah. So we in talking about why you should care and reviewing the list, like it, there are there are some some crossovers between the burnout metric that does have some other components in it. Um, and the metrics model. So we were kind of even struggling a little bit to define it clearly, if that makes sense. Would you agree, Emma? Burnout clearly? Yeah, yeah, because then that's when we were like, well, maybe that metric, this metric should be called, the atomic metric, sorry, should be called mm -hmm. maintainer wellness and mm -hmm. the burnout risk would be the metrics model because like in the metrics model, we were also looking at things like the workload, how many maintainers are there, things mm -hmm. like that, which aren't covered in the burnout metric. Yeah. Yeah. I think that we thought the burnout was the top level and then like wellness falls in there. And like, if you scroll up or I don't know, or the doc, whichever makes sense, then that's where we started to build it out. And um, yeah, so the things that we thought would kept be categorized under burnout. So the wellness, and then we start to describe them here too. We of course ran out of time because this is super hard. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the rest of the things there, there were some metrics. So I think in some cases we decided like this metric speaks for itself, like the best, like we just put the link there. We didn't try and get into evaluating that the existing metrics too much. Because the metrics model, I think the key word there is risk, the risk of burnout. Like what's, what's the probability that your maintainers are going to burn out are going to leave are going to be stressed out. Like, so um, that part to me was kind of the key is that's what we're measuring is the level of risk and, and all of these components. So the, the project burnout was only one little piece of that. Does that make sense? But then you're right, it was very confusing because the atomic metric was called the same thing as the metrics model. So mm -hmm. we're kind of, I think, maybe flipping and doing the opposite of what you were just saying, Lucas. So I'm yeah. not, okay, <laughs> you're nodding, yeah. Um, but I don't know, like, I, we, you know, Emma and I kind of went around and around about it. So I would, I would love to hear input from others and what you think about. I'm thinking, I'm not silent. <laughs> I'm not stunned. <laughs> we don't have to decide it right this second. You know, like we can come back and, and let it stew for a couple of weeks and come back to it or whatever. I think that um, <clears throat> that, that downstream users of, of packages um, would be, you know, they would be unwise not to think about the people behind it. And, um, and people sometimes do um, things that are really destructive to the downstream users. Um, for example, I needed to upgrade a package and the maintainer um, didn't want to support any versions of Node that were odd numbers and then wrote some code to throw an error if there was ever a version that used odd numbered versions of Node. It was just kind of crazy. And like I needed to kind of know about that person. And so 
I see this model as being kind of about the risk from the people. Uh, and I think it's a really valuable model in that sense. Yeah, I will also say that, you know, we, we were looking at um, usage and project popularity, you know, because the high, like the more high profile a project is, then the more attention it's getting, the more people are depending on it, the more people are, are looking at mm -hmm. it and making judgments and conversations about it. And so like that, all of that stuff doesn't reflect in the project burnout metric. So, but it can add to someone getting burned out, if that makes sense. This is where we start getting so meta. Like we're like, this is so right. meta yeah. because uh, <laughs> like good. that is also really? true for security, right? Like the more people that, and if you look at the criticality stuff and the, so, um, and I also wonder if like when we're setting goals for this work, if it makes sense to like, we're, our Kevin talked about having like one metrics or two metrics models we work on. Maybe there's also within each of those only two or three atomic metrics we work through just so we're just trying to get to some sort of MVP and we could still add things, but I don't, anyways, I'm just trying to think of like how to get to but, something. To that, point. to that second point, Emma, about starting with fewer metrics, I would say one of the things that we'll look at here shortly, just with respect to a metrics model release is the DEI event badging metric mm. model. I mean, that metric model is, it's not that many metrics and it's not the full, it's not everything that you could look at within an event. You know what I mean? And the, yeah. the program itself is also not everything that you could look at in an event, but it's a start. It's a, it's moving us forward in a positive direction. So to your point, there's probably something to be said about just having a few <laughs> metrics that help define a metric model to start. So I, uh, mm -hmm. I agree with what you just said, Matt, and I, I also agree with, with what you were saying, Emma. I think uh, simplifying, simplifying our process and scope, I think is gonna be very helpful for us right now. And it can become more complicated later, but trying to do too much right now is gonna over complicate the process for us. Uh, so I, I think we kind of need to, we should focus on the, the utility of these models and maybe focus on just a few metrics that can fit within those models so that we can, uh, if we're releasing them, we can uh, re release them in a way where they can be helpful to the, the community, right? Well, people can actually go and look at them and say, oh, this, is, this has utility, I can, I can use this model. I think that if we, um, if we thought about this metric as being about um, social and emotional factors, then um, it puts us, puts us in a position to um, stick to only those metrics that tell us about the social and emotional capability of the maintainer group. And so things that I think about there are um, like the number of uh, ad admins is one. Um, like with colors.js, there was really only one core admin who owned all the privileges. Um, and um, maintainer wellness, uh, probably maybe elephant factor and bus factor. Yeah. Those would be the big ones. I liked those two, uh, at least because I felt like we could definitely get to a calculation or that we'd have like a pretty strong hypothesis about what that would look like and be able to calculate it. I think it's harder to do the wellness one, but if we only have yeah. one that's hard and two that are really <laughs> yeah. useful, something like that. That's, good. that's pretty good. And sometimes the the metrics too, they're, um, as we've learned in the just the chaos project in general, they're not always about measurement. Hmm. They're about getting people to think about these things within their projects and to put efforts into whatever the issue might be so like we don't with the dei badging like we don't really have a score for family friendliness but we we just we ask event organizers what they're doing to be attentive to families who are attending and the answers can come in a variety of different ways and we don't say this is good or this is bad we say thank you for thinking about this and making it an important part of your conference <laughs> 
something else too that um, Emma and I kind of struggled with a little is where, where in this model development is there room for mathematical uh, like ratios and things like that, that take a couple of metrics. Like we were thinking in, in particular, we were thinking of like the level of activity versus the, you know, the, the number of maintainers. Like, is that, uh, is that, how do we, how do we communicate that, that that ratio would be what we're looking at, not maybe the individual metrics, but like those two things together. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I don't think we want to give them a specific ratio. I don't think we want to define that. I, I think it's it's really yeah. probably just a, a matter of discussing that we should look at it as a ratio. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can you can choose what the ratio is when you use when when you're examining it in your context. Oh, I, think I that... still sorry. Um, I think that um, that would be so like having a ratio would be a reason to include the vitality minimum vitality concept in this context. I'm not sure that that's right, but it's a thing that we could choose to do if we wanted to have this be a, a ratio. Uh, I'm saying even ratio or even the weightage of each metric is context dependent. So maybe we can have a disclaimer or something that a user can choose the different ratios or within that metric or weightage for each metric and uh, apply it to a specific context. But these are the pointers as a uh, things to look or think through when they are evaluating a certain scenario, mm -hmm. which is like a burnout. That's how I had understood Elizabeth's comment. Not that it was a ratio value, but it was a ratio mm -hmm. of a couple metrics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we so just a question about the like yeah. I totally get what you're saying, Matt, about like the family friendly. And I think that's a good around like what what are we what are we trying to achieve? Because I when I walked someone through some of this stuff earlier this week, they were all, especially around safety, concerned about gamification and there's like it was really hard and how you know, like um and I had to back them up a little bit to say, like, you know, we're not like, you know, it's not set up to say exactly what you know, inclusion or safety looks like, but here's some factors and here's based on those factors, what um, looks anyway. So um, lo losing the exact, I think you get the, the idea that it was a challenge that I wasn't quite prepared for. Um, but that said, I think that um, I, I know that like projects and maintainers are asking like, what is a good number? You know, how do I know that I have enough maintainers set up or, you know, I need it comes into funding too. This is where the matter, but so I think there's some opinion too, and I don't know what the the balance is there. But I, we, I think both. <laughs> yeah, we don't. To Kevin's point, we don't give numbers. We we can't. We just have. I think at first we some sort some sort of value, like some threshold to reach. It's just so hard because every every situation, as Kevin pointed out, is so context specific. Mm -hmm. We can say you can look at these things, but you have to, you as a project maintainer or somebody who cares about the project, you have to think about what those thresholds are for you or look at a comparative project that you might aspire to be. But we can't, I mean, years ago, we talked about doing like red, yellow, green kind of thing for the metrics. Mm -hmm. This is, we can't do it. <laughs> we just couldn't do it. <laughs> So maybe the power then is in the description, like why this matters. Yeah. Because I know what the metrics is like, oh, I have this dashboard. I have all these like, visualizations and great, but why does this matter? Like how does this apply yes. to my project? So that's yep. where the power is. Okay, thank you for that. That yep. makes sense. And I think I can explain that to others, which cool. is part of my battle. <laughs> um, I mean, like at a place like Microsoft, you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of projects that you care about. <laughs> like how you couldn't, give a green, like across all of our projects, this is what constitutes good. Like that just would be so difficult. So, so difficult. Um, okay. So it, um, all right, can we move to a different 
part of the agenda. <laughs> this is helpful. Um, maybe before we do, are there maybe any action items? Maybe if you're taking a, if you have taken a look, I'm sorry, if you care about a particular uh, metric model, maybe to Emma's point, think about how we can look at these as MVPs, you know, as these, these minimum viable products that could be put in front of everybody. And then to Kevin's point, we put them in front of people to help them locate and think about this thing, whatever this thing might be, in this case, burnout risk or something. Um, if we have to play with language, whether that language is in um, a working group or that language is here in the metrics model, that's fine. We can play with that language. So we can we can change things. Everything's pretty dynamic in the CAS project. So, um, so maybe next week we could talk about that. I have a dog that wants in the room. So, <laughs> if you yeah. let him in. I, well, I, yeah, I will. I was talking, and <laughs> you hear that? Dogs are more mm -hmm. important. Sometimes if I'm wearing my headphones, the dogs don't know that I'm talking to someone else. They think I'm talking to them because they don't hear anything else back. So then they come running like, what? Are you talking to us? No. He's safe. <laughs> talking to my Maybe. friends. The other thing is too, um, if, if just looking at this, I'm super sorry to stay on this, but looking at this, like if we have just, you know, these three that are highlighted, implementation becomes a slightly easier story to talk about <laughs> you know these are two metrics that you could deploy and then maintain your wellness or burnout whatever it ends up being called like these are the things you should think about like more broadly so a couple of these can be calculated um and some of these are just things to kind of you know center better center within your project and think about ways to improve within your project so all right cool like that i like that and then i for me i'm being able to show people that this is where we started and then we create you know we did this and then we do this and then i think that'll also get pe more people go visualizing how they can be successful participating and contributing to this which is cool yeah right because they might have a metric they're like you know this would be super helpful to, exactly. to include in this model exactly. <laughs> i use this all the time yeah right on uh all right so um Let's see, just one note, I can take this on as an action item. Right now our readme is a little bit different than our spreadsheet. Like what we have listed in the spreadsheet, these focus areas is not the same as what we have here. That's all. I can fix that. It won't take very long at all. Okay, um, I, I would like to make a proposal that with this next round of our metrics release, we release a metric model. That's a proposal. So one of our metrics models that we have is, it was kind of a backwards metric model because we had put together the DEI event badging program prior to the metrics model working group forming. So, and then there it was, you know. So we're uh, cheating basically is what you're Yeah, saying. we're super, totally <laughs> cheated. I'm down. Let's there do are it. a few metrics, I think, Elizabeth, correct me if I'm wrong, but in version three, aren't there a few additional metrics that need to get in here? Yes, around, I think, inclusivity at the event, like global time. Oh, yep. Things like that. So there are just a few, That that's an easy, an easy fix. Um, so we need to, to get this metric model into the release that is coming up whenever later. And so Kevin, this is where I'm really glad you're on the call. Um, you can nudge or delete or whatever needs to be done to make sure that the release from here is correct. So can, can I make a proposal about how we uh, release or present these metrics models? Um, hmm. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I actually don't believe that these should be released as part of our of our metrics releases. So I think they're 
the, the metrics definition work that we do has some uh, rigor and validity to it in, in the way that we do it. And we release those metrics kind of as a bit of a, it's, it's kind of a standards document. Uh, I don't believe that these, these models fit with kind of that, that metrics definition or metric standards. These are, this is more about providing uh, utility and guidance uh, for, for using some of the metrics. So I would propose that rather than releasing these as part of our metrics releases, maybe we released them in a different way. Perhaps we released them as a blog article uh, where we released the, where we released the model and perhaps we tell a story that goes along with the model, perhaps uh, 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 kind of using the model in context. Uh, so the, the review for this, rather than going through a 30 day review process, we just, we treat it as more informal and we just, we create the metrics models and we present them at the community meeting uh, for comment. And then based on that, we release them in a more informal way, I suppose. Uh, so I completely understand if you, if you do want a more formal release on them, but uh, I thought I'd throw my two cents in there. Yeah, Emma. I was just going to say that I liked the idea of the storytelling um, and just to sort of go way back to like the, the toolkit proposal where they're like, this is, this is what you will achieve by doing this thing. This is how long it will take you. These are the types of things you will learn kind of story. Um, and that could be its own format for metrics models. I mean, I'm kind of coming in like late in this conversation, but um, I like the idea that there could be predictable headings under like, you know, this is what you do and this is examples of where we've done it. I don't know, something like that. There's a convention in documentation of having recipes or how to's. I forget the name of that section, but you always see it where they're like, here's how to do these 10 common tasks. Other thoughts? Elizabeth, what do you think? Your first reaction, anyway. I really like the idea of the toolkit. Because um, I believe, like, I, I like the idea of us telling a story, um, but I don't know if people will sift through that to find the bit that they are. But I think something like a toolkit that is very visual and very clear, and they can kind of hone in on you know, what's doable for them if they only have a limited amount of time, which I think was our original goal in putting these metrics together was to like package them up and hand them off in a nice little pretty way. So I, I kind of like the toolkit. That's just my feeling. Cause I really like the time piece of it because I feel like that's the thing that keeps, and, and maybe if we have like a, you know, I don't know, a difficulty level or something like that, like I want something easy yeah. and quick at the beginning. And then, then I can dig deeper and see if I have more time and get more context. But I think that that easy and quick is what's gonna bring people in to actually use these. When we're talking about using the toolkits and the DEI reflection group too, it's the same thing about how, if you're centering DEI within your project, here are things that you can do that might be a little bit more approachable. Here are things that are longer arc considerations. I don't think the I don't think the toolkit discussion uh, changes would change anything in my proposal. I think the uh, uh, I think we could still we can still use that that toolkit idea. Uh, it's primarily about how we were doing the uh, the review and whether or not we want to include these models within our metrics release. Hmm. Well, I think that the um, I think that a parallel um, 
way of thinking about the relationship between the metrics and the models. Um, coming back to uh, typical ways of approaching documentation um, is to think of the models as being API reference uh, and the um, models as being, I'm sorry, the metrics are API reference and the models are like guides or examples. Yep, I, I agree. And I, and I think those guides or examples can be separate from the release. And, and, and actually, I, a step further, I, I believe they should be separate from the release. Uh, so I have two comments. One, I, I don't totally see why the model shouldn't be reviewed. And then whether they're a model or a metric. I think it's okay for the community to have a chance to review them. Um, and then two is the models. I feel like there's kind of two things going on here. One was that, and then the, the models are, are, my hope is, is that the models can be kind of put front and center to people that are coming to the chaos project. Cause they are, I think going to be the most consumable thing we have or one of the most consumable things we have. And so how do we, and I don't know, and maybe it's a blog post, maybe it's toolkits, and this just might be homework, but like, how do we on the web page or somewhere make sure that we get those out in front of people who aren't necessarily on Slack or they aren't necessarily on our weekly calls or anything like that? Like, these are the things we have to deliver to people. And my one concern with the blog is that that's a chaos blog and it's probably not seen real a lot. I mean, we we could try to we could try to publish those in other places other than uh, yeah. other than right. chaos. Yeah, uh, what I was thinking was like releasing the model, the way we are releasing the metric, have the community review it. At the same time, we create a blog for the marketing purpose, like spreading out the word, which we can put put it to the open source dot org as a like blog or even our own chaos website as a blog and have both the things like mm -hmm. going through the community process so that we share it with the entire community and uh, have a blog to tell a story to the broader audience. Um, can I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. I, I would be happy to take the DEI badging metrics model that you've put together there, Matt, and try to make a toolkit out of it. Just a first draft, first pass, here's what something might look like and bring it to the group and we can look at it and see if it's something that like speaks to us. What do you guys think about that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> we'll just see how it resonates. And if we look at it yeah. and we're like, yeah, maybe it's not, you know, it's not really capturing what we want to you know, what we want to do, then, okay, cool. Then we'll try something else. We'll try the blog, like having it more of a story that's told. Um, well, I think you could, I think you can still do both, right? You can create the toolkit and you can still tell the story. Uh, and, and by the way, I, I wasn't saying that we shouldn't do a review. I was saying that we maybe shouldn't do the formal review that the metrics go through. So I, Review review is still good. I, I believe that's good, but uh, but the thirty day review process and the uh, the six month cycle of releases, it seems like we're overcomplicating this, and I and I don't know that these models would have the same uh, uh, staying power as the a metric would, right? So the with some of these models, we're kind of playing with different metrics and we're only looking at a few we're not looking at uh uh we're looking at similar things in different ways it it feels like it's a little more uh temporary right we're kind of we're stepping through it and seeing how we can use these metrics and, and giving advice on how to use metrics but we're not creating these hard fast ways of understanding how to to use these metrics whereas a whereas a metrics definition really is that atomic metric is you know, we're defining this thing, that way we can talk about it. Okay, well, we are at the end of time. So take Kevin's comments and take 
Lucas's comments and Emma's comments and Elizabeth's comments and Vinod's comments and my comments and everybody's comments that's on this call and think about them uh, over the course of the next two weeks. And the general, the general thing to think about is how, how do we present these and how do we release them? Like what, what do you envision that to be? And with that, we will see you in two weeks. Sound good, everybody? It's always Woo. good to see everybody. Yes. <laughs> Take Thank care, you. everybody. Bye. Bye. Stop my share.